What is up my dashing dudes and darling dames? I am the Hans TV, and welcome back to the only subreddit that shows you the ilk of humanity. It's r slash tales from retail. Our first post for today comes from Nocturnal Rat. Customers get trapped in the store because the closing announcements didn't apply to them, I guess. I'm a cashier at a shop in the UK that sells clothing and home goods. For some reason, we've had an uptick in interesting customers ever since we reopened post lockdown. So if you guys want more stories, I have a couple more to share, but this one is probably my favorite so far. I tend to cover a lot of closing shifts and a lot of the times I get to do the announcements to let customers know the store is closing. At 7.45, 7.50 and 7.55, I say roughly, this is a customer announcement. The time in shop is X and we are closing in Y minutes. Can all remaining customers please make their way to the checkouts so we can finalize your purchases before we close? Thank you. And at 8, the announcement goes, The time in shop is 8 o'clock. We are now closed. Can any remaining customers please make their way to the checkout so we can finalize your purchases? Basically, if you're in the shop after 7.45, it's pretty hard to miss the fact that we are in the process of closing up. On the day this incident occurred, all the shop floor colleagues got to leave right on the dot of 8 because they'd finished all their taxes for the night. So after we closed, there were only three of us in the shop. Me, my supervisor on checkouts, S, and my colleague, M, who was acting as the manager on shift. After I did the last closing announcement, we waited a couple of minutes in case any more customers appeared, finished cashing up the tills, and then M locked the shop and went to the cash office while S and I went to the warehouse to do some jobs there. By this point, we had been closed for about five to 10 minutes. S and I have been in the warehouse for a couple of minutes sorting out returns when suddenly the warehouse door which doesn't lock so people can get in and out easily with heavy cages, flies open. And a customer, accompanied by her about eight-year-old son, pokes her head in. I'm like, um, hello? Because frankly, my brain is refusing to process this situation a little bit. And the customer, honestly less stressed than I would be in this situation, goes, can somebody let us out, please? I call over to supervisor who's further back in the warehouse, and she asks me to call him, who has the keys and can let them out. The only phone that the cashiers have access to is at the checkouts on the other side of the shop, and I don't really want the customers to wander off again. So I go, okay, if you just follow me over to the checkouts, I'm going to call my manager on shift so that she can let you out. And this customer's face lights up, and she goes, oh, are the tills still open? Please bear in mind, it is 10 minutes after closing. This woman is actively trapped in the store. The shutters are down. There has been nobody on the shop floor let alone at the checkouts, for several minutes. She had to go into an employee's only area to get help. And now she thinks the checkouts are open so she can buy something. At this point, I feel no obligation to be polite, and I'm honestly also just baffled, so I go, no, there were actually several announcements letting you know the store was closing. Oh, I know, she says, and at this point I feel such a boiling rage overtake me that all I can do without getting myself in trouble is shut up and walk over to the phone. The story wraps up pretty quickly after that. I call my manager whose verbatim response to, hi, there's some customer stuck in the store is, oh, for fuck's sake. Manager lets them out, but not without also locking herself out of the cash office because she didn't bring those keys out with her in the rush to let these customers out. And I lie awake at night wondering how on earth I can make we are closed, either come and pay now or get out of the store, into a polite and professional closing announcement for future use. ETA. I just wanted to let you all know that I was closing today and I think my brain wanted to say everyone's announcement suggestions at once. And what came out of my mouth was unfortunately gibberish. Thanks for the advice anyway though. And this, my friends, is how you know somebody has never worked in a retail position in any way or form in their entire life. Yeah, the store's closed, but you can still check me out, right? Our next post for today comes from Broger Bramjet. We'll get there, eventually. About 15 years ago, I contract delivered for a home improvement store. Think orange or blue, but not. People paid the store to have us deliver what they couldn't take home themselves. I hauled a lot of bricks and unassembled swing sets. Even got to haul three gallons of paint to someone who'd been shopping on their motor scooter. My employer got paid based on the distance from the shore. I was ordered to call the persons I would be delivering to before I left for the run. I often had five different orders on the truck miles apart. It's so for two months. People didn't much like being called that early on a Saturday. Many seemed to understand, 
It stopped one Saturday morning. I called a customer at 9 a.m. to deliver cabinets. I'd actually use a van for that run, but since I was heading out with the flatbed, I was told to call ahead anyway. I didn't get to their site till after 3. Because I have a soul, I called the customer when switching trucks to let them know that I was coming with their load. They hadn't been waiting all that time. Just barely gotten out of the van when the customer started in. You called at 9 a.m., but you don't get here until 3? I stopped him and said, not my idea. I think it's stupid too. Here's the store's card. My store manager was pissed. My dispatcher was supposed to have been calling the day before to let the customer know I'd be out the next day and to arrange a delivery window. He'd gotten busy one day and just decided to change this procedure permanently. Oops number one. It also came out that he wasn't adding delivery fees for longer runs. Under 10 miles was 25 bucks. 10 to 30 was 35 and 30 plus were per mile. He was charging the middle fee for everyone. The store actually made money on the deal as most people lived closer. Only on a rare occasion did we go farther. Oops number two. But he'd built up a slush fund into his budget, which failed when the development 40 miles from the store started ordering. They came to us as there were no closer stores yet. There is one now. They'd sold houses faster than their cabinet maker could ship. I made 10 trips one day, $500 worth. The dispatcher had only charged $350. Rather than increase the fee, he just decided to not record all our runs. Oops, number three. But we did. This one went right up to HQ. My boss stopped working for them immediately. I feel for the people who had paid for the deliveries we didn't make. It took six months of court to get our money, and the company had to pay our lawyer's fees. It was about that time that they bought a pickup or two to rent at each store. This is not your conventional Tales from Retail story because normally they're just people screaming at workers. But I guess getting your boss fired because he messed up, that counts too. Our final post for today comes from Rider for God, Cardboard Lady. When I worked for a retail store, I was assisting this woman who had a few items with her. She was new to the concept of self-checkout, so I assisted her with scanning and setting up payment. The first thing I helped her to ring up was a piece of cardboard, which she stuck under her arm. This will be important later on. I go back to assisting other customers when I get called back by this woman, who had a somewhat thick British accent and was difficult to understand because of my hearing problems. She wanted to know if I had something of hers and to give it back to her. I had no idea what she was talking about, so I thought it was one of the little knickknacks that she had bought. So I said, I didn't have anything on me. I checked the self-checkout station, my pockets, etc., and told her that I didn't have it on hand. This woman got slightly irritated and insisted that I took something from her when I helped ring her up. I apologized, mentioned that I had hearing problems and couldn't understand what she was saying, and asked her if she had put it in her purse by accident. And she got more frustrated at me, saying that I was going to get her another one of the items if I didn't have it on me. I was about to call my supervisor when I realized that the woman was talking about the cardboard that I had helped scan. The cardboard was still underneath the woman's arm. I mentioned to the woman that if it was the cardboard she was looking for, and pointed at it. She looked at me with an embarrassed tone in her voice and an equally embarrassed smile, told me to have a nice afternoon and promptly left. The ability for humans to have something right in front of their face or like on their body and completely forget about it is astounding to me. Like cardboard isn't very comfortable, I'm pretty sure it'd probably cut into your body. I mean, I've had to carry boxes before and I know that that was not comfortable. So how did this lady not realize that she was carrying what she had under her arm? Like, huh, my body feels a little bit different. Huh, must just be the chills. Well, all right, my dashing dudes and darling dames, that is going to do it for today's episode of r slash tales from retail. I hope you enjoyed the stories, and if you did, I'll link them in the description as always. And if you liked the video, subscribe, share, drop a like, and a comment down below which you'd like to see me read next. A humongous thank you to everyone who is supporting my channel right now. I cannot thank y'all enough for how y'all are helping me grow and helping my community grow. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.